Hi there and welcome to our latest tutorial from RQ9 Learner and my name is Pedro Fernandez and I'm representing the RQ9 team. Um, as you may know and as you can see on screen, uh, this time we're actually trying something a little different and we thought we'd have fun with it. We're trying a, an architectural section so we'd start off with our SketchUp base and basically illustrate it very quickly. Kind of run into a, a couple of um, very uh, sweet techniques and kind of experimentation that we did to show you how we could also create this. Um, this project was initially from a studio that I worked on, uh, I worked with uh, in Lisbon as an architect and, and I worked also in regards to the visuals. There were some of my first and let me just bring those up to show you. So as you can see on screen, uh, here it is. And I mean, it was amazing to, to work on this. It was a lot of fun. I remember at the time this was on Ronan's blog and um, yeah, we, we just really enjoyed uh, kind of picking this up uh, and starting on it. Uh, we also used a, a couple of our textures that you guys know by now, our photo packs. Um, just basically some of the photo packs, I believe it was maybe pavement and we also used textures.com. So I'll, I'll kind of try and leave a couple of links in the video below to show you on what we worked and how we worked it and you guys can yeah you can see how we we just did it let me just bring up our section cut and as you can see this is basically where we started from and where we got the whole uh, kind of section going and we very simply came to file and exported 2d graphic and just when you're exporting just remember to export I think we exported something like 6,000 uh, pixels so export at a very high resolution and you'll kind of be safe if that makes sense. So let's start this off finally and let's get into the process and as you can see on the screen uh, we're basically starting off with our masks. Now it's very important that we start masking. Masking is probably the first and foremost thing that I learned when you're doing these, um, these types of sections is to just start off by masking those sections where you're going to start painting and most importantly where your section plane is intersecting so we really want to think about this in terms of values and as a kind of a drawing if you can say that it is a drawing even though it's digital um, that you can really start to think about the values and how things are working and now you'll notice in architectural um, visualization and basically any type of representation or illustration for architecture that you have the these section planes and they're generally very hefty um, they they're, they have this blackness to it that, that really brings out this um, this amazing tone and you'll notice that like anything else that we're doing this is a drawing so as with any drawing you have to represent it in a certain way and uh, there are certain things like values composition that really come into play now just remember again that this is kind of a a very sketchy one if you can call it that and this is also a somewhat of a learning process for for myself who was doing this and kind of having a bit of fun with it in um, in our, uh, our free time and just just really to, to kind of get it out there and show you guys a little bit of, uh, of what we do now as you can see I'm just masking out those section planes and those I found were kind of the most important even when I looked around on references uh, online and first thing I did was actually look at references and and really spot out those important references like Alex Holgrath and and a couple of others that I found that were really good uh, Pinterest is amazing if, if you're going for for references it works really well and basically try and understand how they're doing it from the beginning try and understand what are the most important things and some of those were again the sections uh, those really heavy kind of um, expression of a section and then also I, I found that there was this kind of faking of ambient occlusion that started to work really well and that faking of ambient occlusion was something that I had a lot of fun with and you can see again the references popping up so you'll see I'm always kind of bashing between references and various other things and, and you'll notice that I'm bringing in textures from CG textures and it's also one of the first things I thought okay let's bring in some textures you control T to adjust it and you adjust it and uh, you you right click or and you add distort and I found that if you yeah if you play around with it and trying to match more or less the perspective again this is all very rough um, set it to your various overlay modes uh, either overlay or multiply you can play around with it 
and then you start to you know you start to have a bit of texture now there is such a thing as a kind of a a visual noise and visual noise is something that I found it, it's it's hard to control so basically you have um, uh, you know if take for instance this sketchup uh, file it's it's very plain it's very kind of initial and there is no visual noise and once we start kind of adding that visual noise with those textures those overlays those paper overlays so forth you really start to see the drawing come alive but at the same time I found especially on this one and you'll see that uh, there's some other ones coming up that don't have that so much but especially on this one it was not so controlled so next time it's something I'll definitely have to have some control over and, and just try to understand but again you know if, if you're doing this and, and if you're in uni in my time there wasn't this and, and if you're there I mean the best thing is to, to really experiment and, and go for it again you always notice a similar process so kind of trying to match the skull control T bringing it down trying to see if we're doing overlay or multiply and basically uh, painting an overlay layer or creating an overlay layer and setting that to overlay mode and basically just painting in some white and and just basically bringing out that shine so you're just trying to fake the sunshine and you'll notice as well that I've used a very neutral gray and it's not just out of nowhere you'll notice even some artists they'll use um, uh, I mean great drawings uh, uh, here in the studio as well Farron, Farron is really into uh, the drawing part and the really traditional arts and he draws on this kind of um, uh, drawing paper I, don't, I can't remember the name but it's, it's kind of creamish but you can bring out your dark values your mid values and you can also bring out something really interesting which is your whites the contrast against the gray so I thought it was at the beginning it was really good to experiment with this and I started accentuating that sunlight coming through now you notice that I do take time to kind of move around with it because I was trying to understand, okay, how, how is this working? What is the next part? And my visualization brain is always kind, kind of trying to adapt to this new circumstance, new experience. And as, as people who are kind of cr visually creative, um, you can apply always the same type of, um, same type of techniques. Uh, so here I am trying to apply something of a water brush and again uh, I mean I've spoken in previous tutorials about these brushes and I'll try and pop a link below for some brushes it, again it's so simple I use three or four probably in the whole thing you probably most important is your soft brush you'll notice I was just selecting the windows and those windows are super important because uh, I did think these windows are really going to have an important part visually that we can play around with. And you'll notice that I wanted to get this some sort of, um, of glass texture and that was taken from textures.org. Again, uh, we use a lot of our own textures as well in sites like GoBetree or Textures. But feel free to grab one of our photo packs. This is something that's fantastic. And wherever you go, take your camera with you. Just photograph, enjoy it. Look at those photographs. Look how the values work. And you'll start to build up this kind of historical recollection in your brain. And you'll notice, it's, it's, I've noticed this process, you just gradually get better at it. The more you look at things, the more you try to understand them, the more you start to comprehend what's going on, you'll gradually also get better. But of course, you need to practice as well. So here I am trying to draw some section lines and really starting to see that okay let's play this on the whites and the blacks and again as I mentioned this is a process that I'm also trying to learn and it's something that I'm kind of doing in real time to show you guys how my brain is thinking how I'm trying to pick up certain techniques and how I'm looking at it and as an architectural student you don't have a lot of time you want to get this out you really just want to control this kind of visual noise that goes on behind and you really want to create something that's nice um, it's not defined you'll notice that this uh, like most architecture when we're developed it's not defined it even sometimes changes on site so you'll notice that a lot of what we do especially in uni as I remember was uh, very temporary and the more temporary that we had it in a kind of a mutant stage that's kind of mutating till the very end the more the professors would like it and I thought that yeah this was just fantastic and it's a fantastic representation why always go photo real why always try and just express uh, a photograph isn't architecture a little more than that isn't so many little things in architecture and we never try to explore them or try and go that extra length and I thought that this was important and you'll see again it's just very simple masking objects trying to understand the value of those objects soft 
brushing those objects like I'm doing at the moment and just basically getting an understanding for how this can work visually. Now, I've looked back on this and there are a few things that uh, I, I can see that aren't working too well. And I'm actually doing this at the moment in this process. And yeah, there we go. I just noticed that I was missing this uh, section plane that just passed through there. And that straight away, that, that lifted it and made me understand, okay, so this is this glass structure that just goes behind and under this, um, this uh, slab of concrete. Now here I am again the glass and the glass was an important element uh, visually and also in terms of style and I really wanted to bring out that glass. I wanted to kind of contrast a little against those blacks that we have that are quite profound and here I go filling it up and getting that white. Again I'm experimenting, always experimenting. I'm trying a pattern. Why not try a pattern? Why not try um, a different, different sort of a different sort of brush and this is what I'm trying and you'll notice that uh, when we do get more into overlaying and photo texture it really does come to life straight away and it's fantastic it's so quick and just so lifeful and again not perfect I'm, I'm trying to understand this process and masking out little objects one by one so water again this is a very important one because this is a pool and this is actually an existing pool that we have uh, in Lisbon in um, Ginch, if I'm not in area, Muchach, it's a it's kind of a hotel, and um, this this whole project was to kind of revitalize it, and it was it was amazing. It was by Conic Architecture, and it it was super amazing to work on, as visuals. The the design is really great, and uh, I want to give a shout out to all the team that worked on this. And here, as you've seen, I've overlaid that uh, that water that we had to kind of bring in just a little bit of that texture. Here I am experimenting again with brushes, trying to understand what may look best. You just have to remember in visualization, there's nothing you should really hold on to as a kind of a sacred truth. Um, you should just experiment. There's various ways of doing things. And I find the more, uh, it, it's really, uh, really crazy because when I look at a portfolio from someone, I, I look at it and I go, the less photo real they are and the more the more experimental they are, the more I can see that they really understand visualization and that you can control someone who's out there who has, a con when I say control, not control, but I mean you can rein in someone who's really got a crazy imagination wants to create things, but creating that for someone who doesn't have it, that's the difficulty. That's where the practice comes in. And I've noticed that post artists, the majority of them really get into it and they really love what they do. And not to, to say anything, 3D post, whatever you do is fine, whatever your speciality. But I do find especially that because I understand it a little more and because we, the majority of, a, of the artists that work at Arc 9 visualization, they are more post orientated. But all these principles can go into interiors, exteriors, photo reel, more 3D-ish, anything. And here we are with a, you'll notice a big square brush. This is another thing when I was going around, I started to see that, yeah, there are big square brushes that really do uh, a lot of the work and they really help and there's this transfer um, this transfer element that you can add to the brush. If, if you want a tutorial on brushes, just give me a shout out and I'll do a tutorial on brushes. Again, uh, we should have a link below for these brushes and you'll notice that I, again, I'm just trying to see visually, I could see that extending that to the left did balance it a little more. I haven't flipped this drawing yet and this was something that uh, I should have done straight away and various times, but I guess I myself was also understanding it. It was a lot of novelty to it. So here I am again, trying to, to think about distance and depth and uh, could, could I create something with white in the background? So I've just created a normal layer, mastered it out and you'll see very quickly. So the quicker I'm working, the more I can get those ideas on paper and I can understand it. And no, that didn't work, that cloud brush. I mean, there's potential there, but I did do it with a gradient. I simply masked it out and added a gradient. You'll also notice that the photo underneath that, that photo that kind of has this line, it just seems to work very well with the design. And um, it's kind of contrasting almost against that perfection of the design and having the old part on the right at the moment on screen and the left part, which is kind of the new part. So this, this worked quite well to, to give it this, uh, this temporary, it's still mutating design. It's trying to understand it. It's old, but it's new. 
So all this works in favor of, uh, of what you're developing. So you have to really think about what type of architecture you're expressing and also the drawing that you want to express. I mean, it really depends. I could do this in a Tron-like way. Uh, it could suggest that, it could suggest that. And as you can see, I'm just adding these small lines that just bring out a little more. And it's all about visually understanding your balance, that your balance from your left to your right and how this works. And I've got this central part and that's one where I want to focus my attention. And you've just seen that I've just flipped this again, another line and just working my way through the drawing at the moment, trying to really understand these, these various techniques. So you'll notice that I've brought in this paper sheet and this paper sheet uh, I thought was fantastic at the time, but I did experiment around with it a little bit and you'll see me experimenting around with it a little bit and, and trying to understand that form and just how that form works. Now, again, uh, just trying to have this kind of historical, historical aspect to it and really trying to get the, the old and the new working together. Speaking of old and new, uh, that actually reminds me of something we were really fortunate to participate and collaborate in, which is uh, Project Zone, and this is hosted by HP and NVIDIA and CG Architect, and we had a blast at them. Uh, I'll show those below, uh, I'll show them on screen, uh, just interrupt for a, for a second, and you can see that, uh, I mean, we had so much fun with these, with a the before and after here just how we painted these up and used uh, the, our various techniques. Now you too can participate, uh, especially in the rendering competition. So the modeling phase is done, but the rendering competition is still going on and you guys can participate. And it's coming from, I, I think from the time that I'm recording this, it's like five days left. So you guys check it out and have fun because it's fantastic. It looks so much fun. Now let's get back to our drawing and our architectural section. So as you can see, uh, here I am flipping around, flipping back, forward, and using our various styles. So as you know, and I've previously mentioned, I exported quite a few styles. Uh, if you're interested in the file, and this file is on sale for a slight price, just check the description below and also check here the card or some description somewhere that I'll add. And you too can understand and follow what's being done. Now here I am working my way through the file and just double checking the various few things and the masks, the levels, seeing where I can better this. And now I did understand that, again, that visual noise that we spoke about, some textures too clean, some textures not clean enough. And I did find that it would look really nice if we just added some, a little touch of kind of metal almost to these, to these, um, to these elements, architectural elements. And again, soft brush, trying to, to really bring out that shade in, in the shade and also trying to bring out the whites from the white. So getting those mid values a bit more shaded in. And here I am gradually going through it. And again, it can be done with an overlay layer, multiply layer with a black soft brush. And here I am back to my old faithful square brush with a transfer on it. So it's got this some sort of uh, of pen pressure on it so you can really feel if it goes hard or not hard. Again, I'm using a Wacom, uh, a Wacom Intuos, so I do have a Cintiq. We have various things in the studio, but Intuos, this has traveled the whole world and I love this tool. It's fantastic and it really helps if you're really getting into this. And you'll notice that I brought in this paper and if you slowly rewind through, you can see that this paper is basically very heavy black and white and that I amped up the levels a little more into the black so just a little bit the whites could shun through and you can see that overlay and that multiply that really works uh, again you, you'll see that this was done so quickly so not everything is masked accordingly but here I am again just slowly working my way through it and I did find this this paint splotch almost worked uh, but not really I think in the end we got rid of it and just basically uh, trying to add a bit more depth in the back. Now, one, see, one thing I can see that's clearly wrong. Yeah, yeah, of course. And as I'm narrating this, I could see basically that window on the left way, way too intense, that white. And I basically turned that down. And again, just creating those masks and just working my way through it. I'm not entirely sure, but I think at this time I, I basically created a mask 
just for that sky. And you'll notice just a little bit of lag. And here we are, back into it. As Camtasia catches up. And just running my way through it with the pen tool. So you just press P, go to the various points. And I, it, sometimes it does work better. I do find that it works better than lasso tool, especially when I have to navigate around a lot. And this was quite big. So I then just follow through shift if I'm on a straight line and press and then just right click and just select or on the top you'll have uh, to make selection and you'll get those pixels. And then, yeah, I just created the group sky and then I started again trying to understand, hey, how is this working in terms of silhouette? What can I do here? Uh, I mean, I did experiment with a couple of textures and skies, uh, especially from the photo packs. Um, I don't think we, we've released one yet, but the skies are coming. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just trying the various transfer modes to really understand what's the one that works there. I didn't even go to textures and I thought, okay, maybe a bit of cloud on the horizon. Again, just desaturating, I'm going for a very monotone kind of expression, nothing too, too in your face, nothing too colorful, just a really toned down overlay type version, this, this very rustic version, these very kind of... Uh, traditional traditional colors now i did try and paint some clouds thinking okay this is going to be fantastic but i did find again that there was some sort of visual clash um, and it just didn't work from from the get-go and here i am just revamping those white lines and just trying to revamp a little more of that section line to bring out in places and to really somewhat ground this building because I, I always found it needs it's it, it's like a person your feet need to be wide and you need to really have that terroir and really ground yourself to the ground and i think architecture looks stunning when you have this grounding and now you notice that the back again we went back with that with that square brush and here we are rotating and the square brush be careful with the square brush and especially here i think in this version we didn't quite go into we didn't go into it but the square version it just didn't didn't work in that sky and I tried with other with other textures that I googled around like geometric shapes and it just didn't work it just didn't work at all and I did get rid of that in the end but here we are nearly nearing the end and uh, I do take some time again to, to look at my Wacom settings. Be careful if you have two screens, the aspect ratio is different from the Wacom. The Wacom is 16 by nine, if I'm not in error. And if you have two screens, you, you do, when you do a 45 degree line, it's not exactly 45. And here I am bringing out those windows in somewhat of a sketch form. Again, I'm just trying to really bring out a bit more of that sketchiness and just working my way through it. And trying to see a few elements that were remaining and I mean it's not exactly final but it's near final and just having a look at that ground and just masking everything out and here we are nearing the end and I hope I haven't irritated you guys too long narrating but I do find it's very important to to give you an idea of what's going through the artist's mind when you're doing this you really want to to really show people how you're thinking about things and, and how those things may not seem really relevant, but in the end they are relevant. And even more than techniques, it's the way of thinking. Now, that's one of the most important things as well. And, and just looking at things and trying to understand how they work. And here we are nearing the end and it's pretty much there. I think I just experimented it around. I mean, I would have liked to have taken more time, but again, this was a sketch. And this was, again, not the final version. We did go a little further with it, uh, just to kind of correct a few things, but here we are, just uh, trying to add a bit of color, but found that color wasn't really working too much there. Soft brush to, to occlude, do this, what we call ambient occlusion, and we're nearly there and we're heading to the end and as you can see now what's showing up is basically a slow transition from what we've completed what we started with to what we've completed i hope you've enjoyed this video i know it's a bit different um, but i'd love to hear your opinions and and see what you think and also see a couple of your experimentations i mean check out arc9 learn let us know a little bit about what you're up to 
check out our other videos. We've got some amazing stuff and some really fun stuff. And I, I hope that Arc you know, and Learn is just about this, uh, experimenting and, and really showing everyone, okay, we can do so many things in post or this way or another way. Let's enjoy it. Um, until next time, thank you very much. This is Pedro Fernandez from RQ9 Visualization, RQ9 Learn. And from all the team, a big thank you for watching our tutorials.